Hi there. I have successfully converted my Anotion based home into a real smart home. You probably know what Anotion is if you click this video and there's a good chance it is because it came with your home and you're probably frustrated with it. In recent years Anotion was overtaken by much smarter smart home technologies and you might be feeling left behind especially because there doesn't seem to be any good low-cost migration options to create a bridge from your legacy and ocean home to smarter smart home technologies such that they are able to work together. I want to start sharing how I created such a bridge. I'm not a YouTuber and I don't create content for the sake of creating content. I would also have preferred to just buy an off-the-shelf solution and make my an ocean based home smarter, but uh, such a solution um, doesn't seem to exist commercially. So that's why I felt like I have to create my own solution. And in fact, I am very happy with my own solution and uh, I would like to share it with you guys so that you can also help yourselves. I will start by giving a brief description about what an ocean is so viewers who don't know what it is can get caught up and then I will describe how an ocean came to be used in my home and what my problems are with it. Finally, I will show you the smart home system I built to fix these problems and even create some solutions I didn't even realize I needed. If this makes you interested in having a similar solution, you should watch my next videos that will go into detail about how I created my smart home system. What is an ocean? It is a German radio-based communication standard for smart homes and buildings. The key differentiator of an ocean compared to all the other technologies is that it uses energy harvesting to get rid of either wires or batteries in switches. This avoids having to put wiring in walls or switching batteries in your switches or charging them. The reason it's not very smart is because the limited energy it receives it gets from uh, the energy that you um, use to push the button so it harvests that kinetic energy and that tiny amount of electrical energy it then has it's sufficient to just send a radio signal but after sending the signal it immediately um, goes dead again so it will never find out if that signal has been received and eventually resend the message and because radio communication is fundamentally unreliable unless you add layers on top of it that make it reliable by repeating transmissions it's fundamentally a non-reliable communication technology. Uh, the way uh, you experience this is that sometimes you need to press the switch multiple times for your light to go on. And uh, the reason you cannot integrate a system like this into modern smart homes because there all of the communication works over internet protocols, etc. that are fundamentally reliable means of transport. And um, you really want to have systems where, for example, your light itself can switch colors if um, uh, if it knows that it has uh, switched the light, etc. It's kind of too primitive for, for the, the age we live in today. Let me now address uh, my home and why it even uses an ocean. So my house was built 10 years ago. It was built really uh, for me. I was involved a bit with the building contractor, but I was too busy for work to pay close attention. And they basically just told me offhand they're going to be using these like really awesome piezoelectric switches that don't need to have any wiring and I can reposition the switches, uh, you know, freely. You can basically just pull them off a wall and, and just glue them on somewhere else as if it was a battery operated switch, but you don't even need to change batteries. So they thought it was a win-win. Now later I realized it's primarily a win-win for them because they don't need to uh, spend any money putting in the cabling into the walls, but it's going to like not having this cabling is later on going to be a pain in the ass for me and I don't think that they handed the cost savings uh, over to me as part of the, the the final cost of the house I think they just kept that uh, you know benefit for themselves so ultimately what are my problems with an ocean they were I mean, one of them you notice immediately is the non-reliability. The further away your switch is from the main uh, relay hub that actually uh, switches your, um, in I'm in Europe, so 220 volt uh, lines. Um, those relays are the receivers for the for the radio signals, and if they are too far away from the switch, the 
transport is quite unreliable, so you might need to press maybe two times, sometimes maybe three times, sometimes until your light comes on. So uh, that's one thing, but that's not the biggest deal, right? The uh, biggest deal is that uh, these piezoelectric switches, at least the ones that I have, the ones that have been installed in my house, they are very fragile. After maybe having them uh, a year, a couple of years in operation, they literally break and you need to replace uh, at least the, the top part of the switch, uh, the plastic part which you are pressing because they have some really, really thin plastic parts in there. So I found that I'm constant, I'm like ordering these switches in batches of 20 and constantly changing them. And uh, I talked to the electricians who installed it and they basically said like, there's like nothing they can do. So I considered the whole system kind of a frustrating failure in that sense. So then I started looking into smart homes and how I can migrate over the system to a proper smart home system like people use today, right? So like Zigbee or Z-Wave, etc. And there isn't really any kind of migration path. It seems like this Enocean Alliance is not building out any kind of migration systems. I haven't been able to find anything. And they're certainly not going to be low cost if there is something. Fundamentally, the, the expensive part of the installation is the relays. I have, I think, uh, just for controlling the lights, three eight-way relays, uh, radio relays from Enocean. And I would need to change these uh, have them changed by an electrician because I'm not comfortable doing that kind of work myself to some other radio based relay using a more modern technology or maybe ethernet based relays. There are some from Shelly that I ordered, but in many ways they're like less sophisticated, not, let's say not eight way. The, 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 the widest I was able to find so far that would work as a replacement was like four way Shelly. Um, radio relays. So uh, in many ways, these, these radio relays from Enocean are kind of cool. It's the switches that are crappy. And I wanted to have a system where I can continue to use my relay system from Enocean, but use it uh, using other switches, right? Using uh, maybe Z-Wave switch. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up making a bridge that uh, lets me switch the whole system using uh, uh, Z-Wave switches, but it, it, it ultimately talks still to the N-Ocean relays. And that's the really cool thing. So then there, I also then had other problems that don't necessarily have anything to do with the fundamental N-Ocean technology. It's just the lack of smartness, right? Which, which is a, an N-Ocean limitation. And that is basically, we have a four story home here. Uh, that means that our lights and our light switches are distributed in four stories. And that's not because I'm like super wealthy and this is an enormous villa. It's more like a small house that's built like a tower, right? So the 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 area uh, per floor is relatively small and we just uh, stay fit by climbing a lot of stairs. So the frustration was that the kids, I have two uh, small kids, they're growing up now. I'm, I'm really proud of them. But one of their faults is that they switch lights on and then they leave it on forever. Because the house is, is stacked like this, unless I really visit all of the stories all the time, I won't even notice which lights are on. And sometimes a light can stay on for like a couple of days without anybody seeing it. If it's like at the top story where like, you know, my wife has her office, but otherwise we never go there. Those were problems. I wanted to be able to see which lights are on, monitor them, and maybe even have automations that turn off the lights after a while where it's obvious that there's nobody in that room. So with a modern smart home, you can do that. With an Enocean system, I haven't really found a way. Let me now show you what my finished system can do to pique your interest. So one of the things I have is that on my smartphone, I am able to switch any of my lights. The cool thing is that I can also see on my smartphone which lights are currently on and which are off. Finally, I even have this history view where I can see a swim lane for each of the lights and see in the last, let's say, 12 or 24 hours when it has been turned on and turned off, how long it has been on, etc. So I have like full light monitoring. I am able to also create automations, like I was saying, to turn lights off after a time. And then finally, I am able to integrate the entire system with modern smart home devices. Like uh, I have this um, AOTech wall mode quad switch, which is a modern four way um, battery operated or USB power operated wall switch. Uh, it's not an ocean, it's using Z-Wave. 
and uh, I really love it. It's like it has uh, color LED lighting, uh, super cool. I can use these now to switch my an ocean relay box. I did not have to add any kind of um, like uh, Z-Wave relays or Zigbee relays. I don't have those. I keep my own old relays. And I'm also able to use uh, something like this, the AOTech Multisensor 6. So this has like motion sensing, um, luminosity, so light sensing, vibration sensing, humidity sensing, temperature sensing, UV light sensing. It's basically a motion sensor, that's how I use it. And it can also uh, send into Home Assistant, which is what I use for the entire dashboard and monitoring. Um, it can send signals and then I can then, based on these signals, switch my lighting. So if you're now curious about how I did all of that, then stay tuned for the next video.